I'm going to do a little nibble here today. I want to show you how to make a data pack for the Atom. I have right here is a blank data pack by Loran. Here we're another company that made the data pack besides Clico. And I'm going to give you a quick tour of what a data pack is and then we're going to make some ourselves. It may look like an audio cassette and technically it is, but it really isn't. First difference is, and this one's been modified, so let me show you an unmodified data pack. The first difference is, is right here, let's see if you can see a little better there, right there, there is no hole for the cap stand that goes through that drives the tape. All the tapes are driven by the two motors on the reels. So to modify, to, for my purposes, I had to drill a little hole here. To do that, I used my Dremel. And what I did is I take a little piece of plastic or maybe a toothpick, pull this out so it's out of the way, drill my hole, make it clean, and put it back in so I don't destroy the tape. The other difference between a data pack and a cassette tape is that, right here is a blank cassette tape. Is that, see here that hole for that capstan. The other difference is, is that data packs have these holes right here at the top, which may be hard to see, but see those holes right at the top. They go into two lugs that stick out in the data drive that holds the data pack in place. It also stops you from inserting it backwards. We don't have those, so we have to make them. So what we're gonna do to make a data pack is, let's put these out of the way. I don't want this to get destroyed. We'll put that one out of the way too. And over here in the corner, we're gonna use nothing that's up there to make our data packs. So let's just set them out of the way. First thing I'm gonna do is I need to modify these. Modify, let's get my, I'm doing three data packs right now. So let's get my three blank data packs. These are 60 minute audio cassettes. It's recommended that you use better quality. I have a couple better quality ones that I can show. It's recommended that you use better quality, but I use these cheap ones. I only use them a couple times. It's not like I rely on living off the data packs like they used to in the past. Instead, I use these to test stuff, but mostly I run things on disk drive. So, this is a data pack. Let's just pull up this little excess here. We're going to look at them, and I want all my data packs to have the screws on the back. That way I know which side is front and back. So, all of them are going to be on the back. So what I need to do is I take my Dremel and I had a little round off bit there, turn them over. And if you look right here, the recording tabs, we need to drill two holes right there for those lugs. Again, let me show you what they are. Those lugs right there, see how? They still have the spots in here, just like they do on here. They're in this design. So I'm gonna take my Dremel, turn it on. And I'm going to just drill down in there. I'm not worried if I take out the little record the right tab there. I just want to make sure I don't go into the case. So that's one cleaned out. Pull out the excess. Yeah, I might have to get something to let's reach down here and grab something I can get this excess out with, maybe this will work here. All right, so we have created the holes there and I didn't open it up in there so there's no plastic gut inside the reel. So that's one down, I'm gonna make two more. I notice some people like to hold the Dremel as if it's a screwdriver. I like to hold it as if it's a drill press. I use my left hand to stabilize things. That way it doesn't wander all over the place. If you don't have a Dremel, you can also use an old soldering iron. I've done that before. Just dedicate that soldering iron to melting plastic. That'll work just fine. Hmm. That one, this plastic's still in there. And if you nick this up a little bit, that doesn't matter. That really is not used at all. What I'm just trying to do is avoid going into the actual case, making a hole inside there. So I did good on that one too. 
If you do make a hole in there, it's okay. Just try not to get any plastic in there because that's really not good for the tape. You might get some random piece of plastic in there. See how it's a little chipped there, but that's okay. So now we have done that. Let's clean off a little mess here. Get those out to the side. And what we're going to do next is we're going to bring over this. This is a copyette. This system right here allows you to make copies of audio tapes. It's a mono, as it says right here, one, two, three, mono. You could use a stereo. I don't have a stereo one. I'm assuming you can use a stereo. What are we doing with this? Why do we need this? The data packs have a unique formatting on them. They can hold up to 256,000 characters. So they have 256 blocks of 1,024 characters each. And pre-written on this data pack is an indexing so that the Coleco Atom can find the individual blocks. So it doesn't have to read from one end to the other. It can jump around random access, basically. But the Coleco Atom, or Coleco Vision in all their wisdom, did not release any hardware that would let you format a data pack. Control the consumables. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy the formatting from this to the blank audio tapes. I put this one in the master. Always put it in the master. Don't put it in the copies because if you put it in the copies, you're going to erase it. So I put this one in the master. I put it so that the holes are down so I know which side is what. So I put that one in the master. And I take my three data pack or my three tape drives I made. Take that tapes I made and I put them in again holes down and once it's in turn on the start button or turn on the power button in the back and I hit start and what this is going to do is going to high speed copy from one side to the other first it's going to rewind these tapes then it will do the copying and I'll fast forward this so that you don't have to listen to it and watch it because it I mean it's not slow it takes maybe three minutes to make it a data pack but it gets kind of loud when it gets there so again like I said I will fast forward through this all right as you see now it's done setting the tapes so they're in position now it's going to start copying them once that one's finished there it goes now high speed copy sometimes because these are older tapes they're brand new they've never been used but they're older sometimes a tape will bind up and go real slow and that one I basically I Loosen the screws up a little bit and try it again. If it doesn't work, I discard it. I got these tapes on eBay. I bought a hundred of them for, I believe it was $50. Then I had to buy the clamshells individually. And out of those hundreds so far, I mean, my success rate with it is probably 85 to 90%. I think I've only had like five go bad, or five not format correctly. They had a bad spot on them. And sometimes you can fix the bad spot. When it copies over to, when it copies this over, I'll put this in the atom and I'll do a test to make sure all the blocks work. If they don't work, what I'll do is I'll put it back in here and I'll take a blank tape and I'll blank that tape out and try it again. Sometimes it works the second shot. Anyways, I'm gonna let it fast forward to this piece here. So as you see, now it's done. It's gonna rewind it back, reset it, and then it's done. Interesting is that these are 60 minute tapes, 30 minutes on each side, and technically this is too, but if you notice it never used all the tape. There's still probably maybe another five to eight minutes of tape that wasn't used on these. I'll let it fast forward through this. You see the speed difference too. Some of these went a little faster than others, and I may find issues with that later. But there, it's all done. I just duplicated this one onto three others. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these out. I'm going to go over to the Atom and we're going to test and see if they worked. Hey everybody. Now we're back over here by the computer and we're going to take our three data packs we just made and we're going to format them in CPM. You might be saying, wait a minute. I thought you couldn't format them. Well technically you can't, but what CPM wants to do is CPM wants to blank out all the data and then create the directory and so forth. So what I'm going to do is take one of my data packs I just made, put it in my drive, close it up, make sure it's seated in there good, close it. I, don't even know, I think that hole was a little bit off there, so I may have to re-hit it with the Dremel. 
Take my data pack I just made you. See, that one went in better. I'm going to run a program called format. If I do a directory, you'll see what I mean. I'm going to run format. I'm going to learn how to type. What format am I going to, or what drive am I going to do? CPM, if you boot up on the data pack, then this is a drive A, this is drive B if you have a second tape drive. If you boot up from tape, or from disk, this is drive A, your second disk is drive B. That's C, that's D. If you have a RAM expansion in there, then that's drive M. It's a 64K RAM expansion. So, I need to format drive C. Tell it which one I want, press format when ready. Now what it's doing is it's rewinding to find block zero. Block zero is at the center of the tape. I'm gonna explain more on my DDP repair, how the formatting is, but just suffice it to say that on the one side of the tape you have block 64 through 127, then block zero through 63. Then on the other side of the tape you have block 128 to 255. You may say, why Millie, why so weird? That way the directory which is on block 13 is always right at the center. So you don't have to fast forward or rewind the whole tape. It's that half the tape. Now I could be wrong on the back side. It could be on the back side, um, what would it be? 192 to 255 and then 128 to 191. It could be that way too, which kind of makes more sense because once you get up to 127, you just start reading the back side of the tape or the second track. Anyways, it's formatting it right now and you can see it's counting through. It's having a hard time finding it, finding the indexing number, which means that this tape may be bad. See how it reads one or two, then it rewinds to refine it again? It's quite possible this tape may be bad. Yeah, I'm gonna break this one not break it, but you know what I mean, I'm going to stop it. Control C doesn't work too well, so just reset. Put that one over to the side. This is why I said that these are audio tapes and not the best things to use, but they do work. So, let's try another one. Let's just make sure, yeah, my head looks pretty clean. If you ever have problems with your data drive, take a Q-tip and some rugging alcohol. Clean the head down in there. Let's try another one. I want this to get going and then I'll fast forward through it so that you don't have to watch the whole formatting. So we know this one has issues. I'll redo that one again on the copier to see if it works better. So let's try the second tape. I have a program, it's up in my box, I gotta get it out which is a DDP verifier that I wrote, a very quick and dirty little program, which basically just goes through and makes sure it can read every single block. It's nice to use on these tapes here. I boot up on that with the DDP verifier, stick a tape and hit enter, and it shows me on the screen if the blocks are good. But I wanted to show you how formatting actually works. So, let's see. So far, so good. This could have been the one when I was copying them. I don't know if you noticed there was one tape that got done faster than the other. This one may have been running too quick. Because look, see this thing's running nice and clean. So I'm gonna fast forward through this and when it's done, we'll see if it worked. All right, we're done formatting that. As you notice, if you was watching the numbers, they get up, they get to a certain point, they get to 64, then it takes a while for it to get going again. That's because it's rewinding the tape back to the beginning so it can get block 64 through 127. And then again, when it gets at the 128 block and at the 192 block, it takes a while moving around. So, 
We formatted it. I can verify it, which means it's gonna go through and read all 256 blocks to make sure it worked. I'm going to assume it did work this time. So I'm not gonna verify it. I'm not gonna format another. Instead, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna sysgen this. I'm gonna put the system on there. So sysgen, what sysgen means, system generator. It'll copy the system, which is the boot track, the BDOS, the BIOS, and the CCP from the disk drive and put it on the data drive. So the data drive will then be a bootable drive. So the source is going to be the disk drive. So I tell it A. The destination is going to be the data drive, which is going to be C. So now it read from there, just put it on there. Takes a few seconds. Right now it's seeking block zero, so it can find block zero and put it in there. It's gonna write, what is it? Thir uh, it's gonna write 12 tracks. It's not gonna touch the directory. The directory is tracks 13 and 14, 15 on, or tracks, blocks. They're used interchangeably. So blocks zero through 12 are gonna hold. Block zero is the boot. One through six, or one through, yeah, one through six is the BIOS. Seven through 12 is CCP and BDOS. So it's done writing that. I'm gonna reboot. It's gonna reboot on the floppy. When I get done, I'm gonna turn the floppy off and I'm gonna boot the computer from data drive. Sounds like I may need to lube my disk drive over here. So let's shut this off here. I'll leave it on. Reboot this. No, t no disk was in there, so it couldn't boot there, so it's gonna boot from here. If you had an other older 8-bit computer like an Atari, a Commodore, other ones that you used the cassette decks, you were used to really long, slow load times. This data drive is actually comparable in speed to the disk drives of the Commodore. It's actually faster than the Commodore disk drive, and it's almost the same speed as the Atari disk drive. The only issue you have with this is the seeking time to go find it. Once it finds it, it loads fast. And as you can see, it's booting up CPM right now. There's nothing on here except the system. So if I do a directory, there's no file. But using that little method I just did there, I just made myself another data pack, which is probably one of the biggest issues with the Coleco Atom. If you don't have a disk drive, and if you don't want to sink the money into buying an ADE or building one yourself or buying a VDD, ADE means Atom Disk Emulator, VDD is Virtual Disk Drive. They're the two different versions. There's also an ADE, which is actually a version of the, D, of the data drive on SD card. That's made too. You can build these yourself, those through the ADE and the data drive one. The VDD is proprietary and it may or may not be available anymore. But if you don't want to sink your money into that and you just want to have the standard old Atom hardware, you need to have data drives or da uh, da data packs. And if you have no way of making them, you're, you're kind of screwed. I mean, you can search on eBay and find them, but there's no guarantee they're going to work. And this way, you do have some.